Your first 1,000 Twitter followers, what does it look like? So that might not sound like a lot, and frankly speaking, it's not, but it's more than most people have. So it's funny how the um, averages work right there. You can look at these things as social credibility, for one. So uh, their quality of follower isn't always the same with each platform. For example, on Instagram, you can literally pay for like 5,000 5, followers just like that. But it's zero engagement and they offer no value. What I found in the Twitter campaigns is that because this is highly targeted, highly specific um, advertising, these are actually, these are focused followers. They're not that expensive. The cost is low. The traffic starts incrementing quickly. So what's 1,000 followers look like? Hey everyone, this is Nomadic Chad and you are listening to Revenue Operations in 10 Minutes. So right now the Twitter campaign for Nomadic Chad is pretty much on, on autopilot. I could pour some gasoline on this if I wanted to, but I was checking today, the conversion rates are like 0.11 to 0.12, which if you played with um, pay-per-click and advertising before, that's pretty damn decent. I'll take it. These things start off at like 0.02 sometimes, and then you're like, wow, I just hit 0.06. And today I was checking and I was like, point, uh, 0.11, you know, 0.10, 0.11. I'll keep that. And then the, the cost per follow is at 18 cents average. So every day it's growing about 50. So every two days you're up another 100. And then every nine days, just over a week, you're almost a thousand. So you're growing, you're growing over, you're growing well over a thousand per month. Um, and that catches up quickly. But what happened yesterday, this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to get to, which is so insignificant, but at the same time, it's it's money in the bank. And this is this is what I encourage everyone that has high W-2 income, that wants to be a digital nomad, that wants to live anywhere to do. Take your high W-2 income and buy traffic. So yesterday, I was noticing likes on organic posts. These are the ones that I'm not promoting. And I went to see who liked it besides the the uh, favorite 100 that I'm following, which is a Russell Brunson method. Um, and they were in the niche. They were in the digital nomad niche. And I'm, and I'm sorry, just saying this out loud sounds so stupid, but I wanted to share it anyway because I, there's things called leading indicators um, and performance indicators that you want to track now because if you're seeing them now, you're on the right, the right track. So some people that like this were digital nomads. Literally, they were in the work remote space. They were in technology and SaaS space. They understand. They are looking for what I'm putting out. So here's a counter example. Let's say you're doing education, super simple education. I, my daughter was just watching Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and I was looking at that. Let's say you're trying to blow that brand up, and you got to like it, and you go look at it, and it's somebody from, you know, it's like all Arabic letters, and their the theme of their account is uh, travel. Is that person really your targeted niche? Is that person really the follower, or was that the algorithm, like, just dumping a, a, a body at the at the like here that either th that the system knows that you'll like or the in this case the a lot of these contractors that you pay to give you 5000 likes it's just garbage accounts so that's even a wrap leading indicator what i expect to see i've done this for i've done this the most on facebook but i never had a an offer on the end of facebook so i've grown from like 5000 to 10000 um like fan pages to promote certain small businesses and that's good for the small business because it gives them credibility and drives a little bit of number a little bit of traffic but this one is hyper specific in this work remote digital nomad space i'm looking for actual people that are interested in this and nomadic chad this morning was at like 9 30 so that it's current pace by tomorrow it should break a thousand in, in case anyone's date stamp in this it's july 28th 2023 over here at Austin, Texas. So right around a thousand mark, you're getting real organic interaction. I expect around 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, you're going to catch the interest of, I hate the word influencers, but there are other people in your space right now in this pod, in this Twitter pod, and some of these are very active in the space you want to be in, and they're rocking like 1,800 
to 5,000 followers. So in the in celebrities, the wrong comparison also, but these are like your C listers, D listers, and right now you're you're a no lister. You know, let's be clear, I'm not hyping this up. So you're gonna start catching their attention, right? When you're around 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That will prompt that engagement. And as you continue to outpace them because you're paying for your traffic, because you're buying traffic, you're doing it consistently, and you're building every day, you're not, you're not worried about getting 1,000 overnight, you're looking long-term, you're gonna outpace them. And before long, they're gonna sleep, they're gonna blink, whatever, they're gonna look back and they're gonna say, holy crap, he's got 5,000, what is he doing? Then they'll start following your links, then they'll start looking into your offers, or you'll find they'll start coming to you. One of the most beautiful things, um, Russell Brunson says this. I was just listening to Ty Lopez. I think he was saying it. Uh, Alex Berman mentioned this at the kickoff in his Twitter 10K. Nobody really cares about you. Nobody really cares about you until you have a platform. In fact, let me tell this story, and Russell Brunson tells it better. Russell Brunson, in his Traffic Secrets book, he's conveying the story about Arsenio Hall. If you ever remember him, he's like, who, 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 who guy. Well, he ended up going on a... What's that? Your fired show, Celebrity Apprentice. And so and then with the Celebrity Apprentice things, there was always a competition to see who could raise the most money. And the short story is all the other people in the show, they still had connections. So they were able to pull people in and, and get this money raised. Whereas Arsenio struggled all the way to the end of the show. And uh, Arsenio was an interesting guy. God bless him. I thought he had, a, you know, he had he had Bill Clinton on the show playing the saxophone. That's in Russell Brunson's story also, which t- tipped the whole election in his favor. He was that powerful back then. But however many years later, a decade later, or so he no longer had a platform. Nobody cared. It was crickets. So that's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling you is, you you don't matter. You could be clever. You might have some interesting things to say, but ultimately, when you're looking to offer value to some of these other influencers who you want to leverage for traffic because you're in the business of traffic, you make money, you buy traffic, and you live wherever you want, they want your platform. They want the 10,000 people that you're reaching. So we're going we're gonna to close on this because I don't want to twist this to an extent. You should understand that you're growing your platform because you're going to use it to create a list. You're going to lo- use it to convert offers. You're going to use it to generate revenue. But the platform in and of itself is currency. So then when you try to make introductions, when you go to someone and say, hey, how about we get on a podcast together or how about we do an interview? I have 10,000 listeners. I have 10,000 followers on Twitter, I have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, etc. Now someone's paying attention to you. They don't care about this dashing smile. They don't care that I look good in a polo. They don't care that I'm articulate and, and speak in circles on my own podcast. All they care about is that influence that they think that they can suck from you, whether they're good friends or not. So that, I'll just leave you on that. There's a reason that you're doing this. It's worth your money. You're investing in this. It's like you're there's a car wash um, that just built at a gas station near my Austin place. And they're doing terrible because it's in the wrong location. It's just nobody cares about it. It's not sucking it in. So you can have the coolest show in the world, but if you have no platform, if you have no leverage, no reach, nobody's going to pay attention to you. Nobody's going to care. And you're actually not contributing value back to the ecosystem. So honestly, you haven't, you've, you've lacked the creating value and now you're asking to receive value. So at about 1,000 followers, you start to see real organic traffic. That's a good leading indicator. If you're seeing that somewhere between 900 1,000, then you're doing the right things. Keep doing it. I suspect at around, we'll, we'll test this hypothesis. I suspect that around 2,000, 3,000, your other quote unquote influencers in the pod that you're trying to be a part of, they're going to start to notice you. And instead of you seeking them, they will seek you. And then once you get to 10,000, you have something that you can leverage as value to Grow your show technically even more because you're going to ask to have influential guests on. So what are we doing here? Make money. What are you going to do with your money? You're going to buy traffic. What are you going to do with your traffic? You're going to convert offers at the end of it. Cheers, everyone. Have fun.